Halleluja. Halleluja. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And all to you we lift our hands in praise. You are the Lamb upon the throne. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And how to you we lift our hands in praise. You are the Lamb upon the throne. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And how to you we lift our hands in praise. You are the Lamb upon the throne. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And all to you we lift our voice in praise. You are the Lamb upon the throne. You are the Lamb upon the throne. You are the Lamb upon the throne. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And how to you we lift up praise to you. You are the Lamb upon the throne. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And how to you, you, we lift our voice in praise. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And all to you. We lift our voice in praise. You are the Lamb upon the throne. You are the Lamb upon the the throne, you are the Lamb upon the throne, and how to you we lift our hands in praise. You are the Lamb upon the throne. You are the Lamb upon the throne. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And unto you we lift our hands in praise. You are the Lamb upon 
the throne. You have a lamb upon the throne. You have a lamb upon the throne. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the be praised you are the lamb upon the throne and all to you we lift our hands in praise you are the lamb upon the throne you are the lamb Upon the throne, you have a lamb. Upon the throne, you have a lamb. Upon the throne, and her to you. We lift our voice in praise. You are the lame upon the throne. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. The lion and the lamb. The the lion and the lamb, you are worthy to be praised. Is, is the lion and the lamb, you are the lion and the lamb, you are worthy to be praised. You are the lion and the lamb. The lion and the lamb, you are worthy to be praised. To be praised, you are the lion and the lamb. You are the lion and the lamb, you're worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. You are the lion and the lamb. You are the lion and the lamb. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to. Be praised. Lion and the Lamb. Father, we bless you. We exalt you. We thank you for such a wonderful time in your presence. I, we come before you to receive a word and instruction. Speak to us, Lord. Speak a definite word. Let your word come with light. Let your word come with life. Let your word come with power. Let that be an illumination. Let that be an impactation. Let that be a transference of dimensions. Transference of mantles transference of insight, revelation. Lord, we receive the strategy, Lord, that is required for us to extend our spiritual dominance in our corporate ecosystem in the name of Jesus. As I teach and preach your word, let your word come alight with power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we take authority over the airwaves that let you, as your word is being transmitted into the ears of the listeners, 
every contention in the realm of the spirit against this broadcast, I crush it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. You are welcome to this episode of Prospering in the Market Ecosystem and the Market Square. Hallelujah. I, my name is Manasseh Degon, also known as the Prophetic CEO. I'm privileged to be the least steward of the Renaissance Place uh, Metropolitan Church in the city of Abuja, Nigeria. Now, today's episode of uh, uh, Prospering in the Market Ecosystem is meant to equip us with a wider set of knowledge. Now, this is the last day for this uh, month. For the next month, we're entering into a different dimension altogether. And I trust that God is going to really help us to be able to explore the things that God uh, uh, is providing for us next year, amen? next month. Amen. Then also, uh, I've spoken so much this month. I've, I've done a lot of teachings. You can go back and listen to the teaching over and over again. You can well, listen to me. Follow me on Instagram and on YouTube. Manasseh the Gone. You know, as Insta Instagram, I'm as, you can follow me as a prophetic CEO. You know, and uh, I trust that this session is going to help. It's a summary of today. I'm going to be the teaching. I'm going to be teaching today is going to summarize the teaching that we have done all the while. Amen. Uh, we've spoken so so much about spirituality, about character, about capacity, about leadership, about uh, goal setting in the past uh, weeks, four weeks, and uh, you know we've spoken all about spirituality, about developing your, your spiritual capacity, self management about personal reinvention, corporate reinvention, about uh, leadership, about uh, uh, different other things we've, we, we shared during the week, you know, and, uh, and during the month. And today's topic I'm going to be teaching now is going to be on the law. Uh, it's a very important topic I consider very vital to us. Amen. The law of the marketplace. That's a topic I'm going to be teaching briefly for just like a few minutes. The Lord is going to bless you. Amen. The law of the marketplace. We know that law is in itself not bad. Law, law are basically rules and regulations being stated by an institution or by a state or institution or a system to regulate how things are being done. You know, without laws, without regulation, without rules and regulation, certain things will not be done rightly. You know, rules and regulation have to be able to create a lot of balance. You know, and a lot of structure in the system, you know, and uh, now you cannot do understand business without understanding the importance of rules and regulation laws. You know, you do business in the kingdom, we must understand that in the corporate system, the corporate system is very subtle, it's very subtle and very sophisticated. For we to be able to adventure the cause of God within the, within the corridor of man, we must understand that there are rules and regulation, that are laws that govern how things should be done and how things should have been done. Now, we cannot be able to, and as long as the realm of man is consigned, these rules and regulation cannot be changed. So it's up to us as kingdom agents, as corporate apostles, as, as, as marketplace catalysts, to be able to understand those rules and regulations that, uh, that help to regulate how things have been done within that ecosystem. Every ecosystem you find yourself Every corporate world you find yourself, there are rules and regulations that governs how products have been sold, how leadership is being administered, how services is being rendered. There are rules and regulations that governs that very system. There are laws that have been instituted over time by the system, by the nation, by, the, by that very uh, recognized authority that helps to coordinate things within that very domain. So we as entrepreneurs, we... Uh, we as, 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 as entrepreneurs, as, as kingdom, kingdom agents send the corporate system in a respective industry, we are not supposed to be rebels. We don't rebel against the law. There are certain laws that we have to learn how to be able to, as we obey, there's a dimension of the love of God we cannot reveal if we, were, if we live a rebellious life. Yeah. So through the help of the Holy Spirit, God empowers us with wisdom to be able to understand what are to identify basic rules and regulations that have been instituted in that very specific uh, 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 ecosphere or, or hemisphere or that very industry that God is sending you to. You must understand and understand the laws, the rules and regulations that governs why things are done and why things uh, shouldn't be done this and that way. Amen. A lot of Christians are falling victim of them operating in the system or in an atmosphere or industry in the market uh, square without them understanding the laws that govern uh, uh, 
the, the activities of uh, the, the, the activities within that very ecosystem. You know, ignorance of the law doesn't make you to be innocent. The Bible, even the Bible says, "My people are distraught for lack of knowledge." So, what we, when we lack knowledge about certain laws or rules and regulation that governs an atmosphere, place is but normal for we to fall victim. The enemy leverage on that, and when we begin to rebel against certain laws, the Bible calls the devil to be an accuser of the brethren. When Jesus came, when he walked the earth, the Bible spoke about the prince of the world came to him. Satan came to him. But the Bible says Satan did not find anything in him. He wasn't guilty. So meaning that they were, they were actually an event that was put, you know, we saw how the Pharisees did everything to accuse him, you know, to, to, to ask him questions with the intention to trap him. But they couldn't trap him. Trap him. Why? Because they understand how important the law is. The rules and regulations that govern that very ecosphere. Amen. So we as Christians we must understand that. I've seen Christians that are functioning in certain uh, demography or certain territory or certain system. But they are, 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 they are consciousness about the law that we, we, we tend to lose consciousness of our responsibility in the marketplace by not identifying with the rules and regulation that have been put in place to enable us to, so, to enable to us to be able to do business the way they should. Rules and regulation help to put structure and order in the place. Any society that is not rules and regulation that governs the way things have been done, everybody can just become, that will be rebellion, the rate of rebel, with, uh, rebellion is going to increase. So many Christians on, uh, fail to understand that the law, there are many Christians that the battle they are fighting right now, the crisis they are fighting right now, the enemies that they are, they are, that are pursuing them right now, are pursuing them from legal ground. There are certain legal things that uh, things we do that we consciously give the devil leverage and legal ground for him to begin to fight us. When we begin to break laws, when we try to produce, when we begin to produce substandard product, what if you as an entrepreneur, there's a standard of product that we should we should be able to maintain. When we produce product, we are rendering services. You cannot be rendering services below standard, below expectation, and you expect them not to react. So if you're, you're, you're into production, for instance, or reproduction. That our quality must be adhered to. Every industry and system has a standard of quality, a trademark. Amen. That is the organization that, 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 that if you are producing a product, a product shouldn't go be below certain quality. But I've seen Christians, tongue-talking Christians, spirit-filled Christians, compromising their quality, bringing that, diluting the quality or dissolving or bringing down the quality and increasing, inflicting the price of the, 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 the product or services. You know, when we begin to bring down this, when every product we produce in the marketplace has a quality, has a standard, we must understand that the culture of excellence is not just meant to be able to, it's not just meant to be able to uh, uh, reveal Christ or the wisdom of God, but it's also, it's a, it's a defense mechanism. When we maintain a level of excellence, it helps to be able to build a defensive mechanism that the, that the product, the people, the client, the customers we're selling product to will not have legal ground to begin to accuse us. I've seen people that bought product and all of a sudden they discover that the product was below standard, was substandard, the services was poorly rendered, it was not rendered within the time expected, people that were being given money to do a work and they didn't do it at the particular time that they were expected, and they were taken to court. They began to fight battles. Battles that common sense would have avoided, would have prevented them. And there are many battles that most Christians are fighting right now that is not the devil fighting. It is a, it's a direct... A result of foolishness, nonchalant attitude. Compromise. Christians compromise their product. You're supposed to produce a quality, you drop the quality, you increase the money. A client comes to buy a product from you, then you, you, you compromise the quality, you don't really deliver on time, you don't do maintain the quality, you don't be, and, you, and you expect them to receive it in the name of the Lord. No. The world system is a very organized system. The cosmos system is a very organized system. Praise the Lord. The cosmos is a very organized. It's very subtle. It's very sophisticated. They are very organized. There are things we tolerate in the church setting that can never be tolerated in the, in the corporate system. There are mediocrity that we spiritualize. We spiritualize certain level of, 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 of conservative mediocrity and foolishness in the church. That in the corporate system, they will not tolerate it. A client cannot pay you money, needs these services, and need that work done. Then all of a sudden, you you will not deliver in, on time. You not deliver as expected. You can never come and be begging him in the name of Jesus that we you know. Let's forgive each other. Are you kidding me? 
There are many Christians that the battle, the law cases they are fighting now, the distance they are fighting now. It's not the devil fighting them. It's not the devil fighting. It's out of foolishness and nonchalant attitude, taking public. There are a certain level of mediocrity and foolishness we do in the church setting that if you take it to the corporate system, you will be sued. You'll be sued for life. You'll be sued. There was a case of a young man, a young believer in, in, in a Nigerian lawyer that relocated to London, to, to London some, some, some years ago. And he's been practicing a lawyer. He's been practicing there for over, for over like over 10 years or thereabouts. So he, he, there was a job vacancy that he created in the organization. And when he did that job vacancy, a lot of people applied. And among the people that applied was a young, beautiful lady. She's a British citizen. She came in for the work. Beautiful lady, very looking elegant. She should just jump out of the magazine. Now, when this lady came into the interview, all of a sudden, this man saw a beautiful lady and he lost his senses. And look at the comment he said, I love what I'm seeing. He told the lady, I love what I'm seeing. He saw her structure. He saw how beautiful, how fair and tall she is. And he said, I, I love what I'm seeing. And that word he said, I love what I'm seeing, the lady took him to court. She took him to court. And by the time they were able to file the case against him, they, they charged him to pay about 38,000 pounds. And he paid it. 38, uh, sorry, 48,000 pounds. He paid it. Just for saying, I love what I'm seeing. Looking at the beautiful lady coming, oh, I love what I'm seeing. I love uh, your beauty. I love what I'm And the lady took the case to court. So when we don't have knowledge about the law, that we fall victim of a lot of battles that we, are, we would have prevented. We have to know our, our knowledge of law. If you must function as an entrepreneur, you must understand your position in law. Understand your right. Understand your right as a citizen. Understand your right as an entrepreneur. Understand your right as a believer. Understand your right as an entity. Understand the do's and does that govern certain ecosphere. A young man I was feeling to, to, to go and intervene for. He, he's a tailor. He, he normally so clothes and everything. And most times, even myself, that I gave him clothes sometimes, I called him for, for, for four months, he didn't pick my clothes. I gave him clothes for like three clothes to sew. For four months, he didn't pick my clothes, my number. Call him, call him, call him. And these guys, my, he attends my meetings and be blessed. I speak over his life. But I said, oh wow, you're a good tailor. Let me pay money for you to sew my clothes. Give him clothes. Called him for over three months. He didn't pick my clothes. The next time I would receive a call from him was when they, they, somebody arrested her, taken him to prison. A woman. She gave him his, her clothes. And he didn't deliver. She took him to court. They took him to prison straight. I was the one that went to bail him. I stood up for him. And I told him, this tendency has been manifesting itself long. It's not the devil. that It's not witches. You shouldn't say the woman. No, the world system, they are very, it's very subtle and very sophisticated. They don't compromise. There are many things, mediocrity and foolishness we compromise in the church. That in the worst is that they don't tolerate it. A lot of people have used the name of the Lord to bribe and to dupe people. They have used the name of the Lord and rendered poor services, poor services, substandard product in the name of the Lord. So I say it's, it's the, more, the more difficult set of people to do business with are believers. Because we don't adhere to, to standard, we don't adhere to to, 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 to rules and regulation. We don't meet up. So a lot of people just believe that, okay, because we attend the same church, because we are the same we are Christian, we are a believer, there are many things you do. No, you don't do that. There are, a lot. there are many people that have had a lot of battles they are fighting. A lot of cases that is hanging on their head and their organization is out of foolishness and nonchalant. You promise what they cannot do. You're supposed to deliver this thing from now to you. Uh, the next two weeks and the next one month, two months, the client is calling, you don't pick his call, you change your line. That's very bad, very bad behavior. I was counseling a, a young guy last time, a young businessman, that I, I discovered I want to punch him. Every time you will come with a different number. Every time you see him changing the number. Every time changing the number. And by the time I was, I was, I was counting the number he has in my phone, he has about 13 phone numbers. 13 phone numbers. His name was saved. 13 different phone numbers. I, I told him, even a Yahoo boy, even a Yahoo boy will not have numbers like that. A believer, tongue talking believer, business guy. I got to realize that when most of the time when you have business with clan and something happened, that uh, crisis is part of business. But you don't because of you having misunderstanding with one business or client or uh, uh, partner or anything, then you start changing your number. Even Yahoo boys cannot change his number up to 13 times. Yahoo, Yahoo boys. 
The Bible says to whom more, to whom much, much is given, much is expected. Praise the Lord. To whom much is given, much is expected. Second Timothy chapter two verse five. Second Timothy two verse five. Second Timothy two verse five. And if a man also strive for mastery, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. Amen. If a man, and if a man also strive for mastery, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. Amen. The word, the word lawfully there mean no, mimo, uh, no mimos. No mimos. The word law, lawfully as captured here, means nominous. It's derived from a Greek word. From, I mean, it simply means legitimately. Legitimately. That which is agreeable to the law of the land. Any business we do must be done, must be done lawfully. Must be done in agreement with the law of the land. Any product we sell, services we're rendering, that must that stand of quality that we should not compromise as Christians. When we compromise, that there are certain battles that the enemy leverage on certain certain compromise we do in our workplace. The devil will begin to project attack over our lives and our businesses. There are some of us we cannot do Bible without business without quoting scriptures. We quote scripture like what Smith. Scripture falls in our mouth the way leaf fall from the tree. But our integrity, our worth integrity is very, very low. We quote scripture like, like a wordsmith. Scripture falls in like, like water from our lips. But our, we don't adhere to quality. We don't adhere to discipline. When we say yes, tomorrow, what we're trying to say is no. When a, a client gives you a work to do, you're supposed to deliver in three and four, four days, or you're a tailor or something, or you're a businessman, or a graphic guy, or a videographer, or, or cinematographer. We have to learn to adhere to, 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 to laws and principles. Never promise what you cannot do. A lot of us try to use the name of the Lord to dupe people, to cheat people, to lie, you know, to, to cheat people. And when people react, we begin to consider the people as enemy, as demonic agents sent to destroy our business. No. The Bible says, he that breaks the edge, the serpent will, serpent will bite. When you break the rules, the serpent will bite. There are legal ground, there are battles the enemy's leverage on our legal ground, our foolishness, our compromise, our inability to, ability to adhere to, to the law and principles. The enemy leverage on that and begin to fight us. Amen. Hallelujah. After the Apostles chapter 19, we read part of this scripture yesterday. Acts of the Apostles chapter 19. I will start reading from verse 28 to verse 40. Acts of the Apostles 19. 28 to 40. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which were with him have matter against any man, the law is open and there are deputies. Let them implead one another. But if Ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined. Amen. A lawful assembly. Amen. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar. There being no cause thereby, we may give an account of this cause. Now, this was the case of. Paul the Apostle, when he found himself in Asia, we read it yesterday, he went there and the Bible says there was some craftsmen that were producing uh, uh, silver shrines for Diana, one of the goddess Diana. I was able to explain that Diana was a woman, was a principality that was able to dictate the market. She was able to craft a pattern for the market. Anybody that comes to the market pay allegiance to a goddess called Diana. She was a goddess. So there were smith men that were able to make a lot of fortune by, by, by producing uh, silver shrines. Uh, people were able to pick these silver shrines and put in different look and cranny and they were able to make money. So and lo and behold, Paul appeared there. He came to change the rule of the game. And Paul, when Paul came, he came with an atmosphere. He came with a presence. And before the arrival of Paul, they, had, they, have, they have studied, they have heard about the story 
how that everywhere Paul went, Paul usually caused this, subdued the, the authority of the God. And I was able to explain yesterday that you are not allowed to do a business in any market or any territory without discerning the spiritual pattern, the market spiritual pattern. So Paul was able to decipher the market spiritual pattern. And they have the testimony that Paul had the ability to be able to persuade everybody to believe in his God than their God. And I was able to establish yesterday that one of the things that Paul was able to understand, Paul was able to master the act of storytelling. He knows exactly how to tell the story. Now, a lot of us entrepreneurs that we don't know how to tell our story. We are gifted. We have good product. We have good services. We have good gift, good talent. We are gifted in one thing, but we don't know how to narrate it. A lot of believers have that problem. We are very conservative. And we've stretched that conservatism to, a, to an extreme. And it became, it's becoming foolishness. God has given you the best of product, the best of ideas, the best of strategy, the best of services, the best of skill, the best of potential. Nobody is going to narrate your story like you. Paul understood the act of storytelling. He was a master. He was a master storyteller. So he was able to persuade other people to, to, to believe in his God. So the anointing, it was easy for the anointing to find full expression through his eloquence and mastery. So when he starts to speak, the Holy Spirit, the anointing upon his life has the kinetic ability to be extended upon the words of his mouth. So when Paul came, the Bible said there was an uproar that, that happened in the town. There was a cry. People were, were, were fighting. And they were willing to contend with Paul. They were willing to do anything to take Paul to the, to the law, to be able to fight Paul. Why? Because they knew that this guy, when he comes, is going to subdue the whole of Asia. Because everybody around the entire Asia were paying their allegiance to this goddess called Diana. And when Paul came, he, was, he became the greatest threat because he was able to discern the market pattern, spiritual pattern. Amen. So this was what the scripture was talking about, basically. Amen. They were saying that if you have a cause, you have a cause against anyone, take it to court. Let me read that place again. Acts of the Apostles chapter 19, 28 to 40. Acts of the Apostles chapter 19, 28 to 40. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the, and, the, and, the, and the craftsmen which are with him have a better, have a matter against any man, the, call, the law is open and there are duplities. Let them implant one another. Now you see, the secular world are more conscious about the law than we are in the kingdom. A secular man will not sign a deal will not sign a contract without understanding the, the terms and condition. A secular man will never sign a contract, sign a deal, without understanding the, the terms and condition. So there are many of us, the secular people, the worldly people understand that one single clause in the agreement can tie your life, can affect your life in the next 10 years. As an entrepreneur, don't always be in a hurry to sign any deal, agreement or contract without taking time to prayerfully consider the terms and conditions. If there are places you need an attorney or you need a lawyer to interpret for you, inquire, consult a lawyer to interpret this. Thing. So a lot of, I've seen so many entrepreneurs, so many footballers, so many musicians sign a deal, a contract. Amen. They sign a deal, sign a contract that in the next 10 years, 20 years, their life were destroyed. We are tied. We are restricted based on the foolishness of that. So the law, the world system understand the importance of law. But we in the Christian, we always do things. Our consciousness of living the faith life, living by faith, and being, you know, in our attempt to be able to express the love of Jesus, we feel our, our knowledge about the law is very minimal. There are limit to, there are limit to places you can do business with the minimal consciousness of law. There are certain dimensions of business that God brings you into that you discover that law is very vital. Because you will sit down as a director or as a CEO of a company or as an MD or as a lead team, I mean a team leader, to sign a deal, sign a contract as an artist, as a footballer, as a contractor. Sign a deal that by the end of it you regret that carelessness. So, so the world system understands how important the law is. It's very important. We understand that the law, if, when, when properly understood, and obeyed, we can use the law for our advantage. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
verse 20, 29 of that same 19 of Acts 19, 39. But if ye inquire anything concerning other matters, amen. So a place of inquiry is very important, amen. And it shall be what determined in what in a lawful what assembly. He's talking about the court. That's the court system. That's the that justice system that I've put in place. That if there is any crisis, they should go to it to the court, consult it. Many Christians are very, very about consciousness, especially believers, tongue talking believers. Amen. It's not every deal you walk into, you would, you would just trust somebody. Let people, you should learn, people should always earn your trust. You don't do business based on trust or based on faith. There's a wide dichotomy between business and faith. You don't carry faith and the things you should be signing document legally. You are saying, I believe he's my church member. We are from the same local government, from the same state, from the same country. We are from we are all Africans. Are you kidding me? And I've discovered this very predominant mistake around Africa, predominantly African black. If a black man stand on the decks to sign a deal or paper an agreement with a white man, there's something about, I don't know what, I don't know if there's something about the white complexion that, that makes us to lose our common sense. A black man, when a black man stands to sign a contract with a white man, there's something about, they get so very intimidated by a white man. Why? So when it's time for them, so whatever terms and conditions a white man gives to them, they sign it. Because they see it as a privilege then doing a business with a white. Our, 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 our negotiation skills is very minimal. Our bargaining skills is very zero. We don't know how to bargain. We don't know how to negotiate. When we just see a white man, People just get confused. Immediately they see a white man sitting with suit. Most black will just get confused. So anything the white man says, any terms and conditions the white man gives to them, anything the white man gives, they sign it. As long as it's a white man. They consider it as the highest privilege doing a business with a white man. And you know, if you know the white men are very meticulous, they, are, they understand the law. A white man will never do anything without carrying his, his or a lawyer alongside. But we the Bible, we just sit down, we do business by faith. We sign deals by faith. We enter into business partnership by faith. Oh, in the name of the Lord, all is well, all is well, all is well. You might have to sit down. See, that are level, that are corridor of wealth we will never walk into as entrepreneurs. If our knowledge of law, of the law, is very minimal, that are corridor of wealth that we cannot break into as entrepreneurs. If our knowledge of law is very minimal, we must understand that as you grow into certain levels of wealth and affluence, and even leadership, you must understand that you must have good consciousness of law. You must consult a lawyer, have a lawyer. You don't just sign deals. You don't sign contract. Any agreement you read, don't do it verbally. Let that be a written, let that be a memorandum of understanding. MOU. Let that be an agreement. Don't just say, okay, because it's my brother, it's my sister, we're in the same distinction, we're in the same choir. Ah, uh, his father, I know his father is my neighbor. Oh, we are from the same state. They say, ah, my brother, give me five. Hey, Namfa. Hey, sister Chibuzo. No, you don't do that. You don't do that. You don't bring relationship into business. Let's be very strict. When you do, there are certain level of influence that as God brings you into, certain level of financial influence and leadership influence, that your, any attempt you make to be careless or to be ignorant of certain law, it will become you being the victim. So I will always advise you as an entrepreneur, get a lawyer at every level of entrepreneurship, leadership. Get someone that, 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 that a lawyer. Amen. Seek an advice of a lawyer. Advise, let him, he or her, advise you about the legal aspect of that business. The legal aspect of that industry. The leg, what are the rules that bind that society, that nation, that continent, that system? What are the rules and regulations? What are the laws that bind the activities? How money are being made? How money may have been managed. The rules and regulations that govern relationship between client and 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 now, you see, the understanding of the law doesn't make us less spiritual. You adhering to laws, rules and regulations doesn't make you less spiritual. Now, the more 
knowledgeable you are about the law, the more your crisis minimize. The more you, you minimize your crisis and your conflict in the market system. And the lesser, the, the, the less, the lesser aware you are about the law, the more your conflict. There are many battles we fight on a corporate level, on an executive level, in certain territory and industry that are the result of ignorance of the law. When you have a lawyer, the lawyer advises you, tells you what to do and what not to do, how to behave, and how not to behave, how to coordinate yourself. You can't be having a client come into your hands, then you just look at a client, a lady, then you just hug her and, and talk, hold her anyhow. No. You want to have ethics. Some of them will say you are raping them. You can't sit there, bash into a lady's room, a corporate person, you bash into a lady's office, a, a room, and just meet her naked, then you stand and be looking. That, that alone can, can take you to court. You know, you, know, you know, data science has so, so much helped to, you know, there, there, is, there are so many things, information is that, that has been saved in the cloud. Data science or big data has really, really helped. One of the greatest things that happened to this generation is data science and data, big data technology. Anything we do, anything we say, we say, anything we, 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 we write can be saved in the cloud. You can wake up in the next 10 years, 20 years, and forget some of the things you say, some of the things you do, and, but the cloud will not forget it. The internet don't forget things. So the things we post online, the things we do, in my book, Dominion of Our I spoke about the ethic of words and the ethics of actions. You know, the ethic of words and action. There are ethics that govern words, what we say and what we should not say. When you do business, there are things you don't say to client. When you're angry, you flame up, you just say, I will kill you. I give you two days. I give you. And if the person dies, they will take you to court. They will take you to court. And you know, when you say it, it's saving the cloud. There are things you don't say. There are things you don't pose. I call it ethics of words and ethics of action. There are things you don't just say when you're angry with client. You say, you will see, I will finish you. And the person... Uh, it, 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 unfortunately, get got involved in a motor accident. They will say you're the one that killed the person. You did. Or there's somebody or something mysterious happened to the person. They will take you to court. Don't be careless with your words as an entrepreneur. Don't be careless with the things you post online. When you go to meetings, be conscious of what you say. When you're talking with people, pe so your phone can be a covers a thirty minute conversation can be recorded on phone without you knowing. Only for you to wake up the next one year and discover that the same things you say was the thing that is beginning to be used against you in the court of law. So when you engage yourself in business partners with clients, be very cautious with the things you do, the things you put online on internet, the posts, the things you put online can implicate you. The words you say when you are angry and the words you say that when you are too excited, the promises you make when you are too excited, when these things are safe in the cloud, it can be used against you in the court of law. But silence will never be misquoted. Amen. Anything you say or do can be misquoted, can be misinterpreted, but not silence. So there are levels of, of, of influence and affluence that God brings us. God will never take us to two without we having this conscious understanding of the law. You must have a lawyer. Somebody that gives you legal advice on what to do and how. When you sign a deal, don't just stand up and say, you only, the Holy Spirit said I should sign it. The Holy Spirit, I have peace in my heart. Are you kidding me? Peace in your heart. The Holy Spirit says I should sign it. Learn to sleep over issues. If I thought you don't know what to do, sleep over it. Pray. Sleep. Meditate. Think. So that God will direct you. There are many Christians that jump into taking decisions, erratic decisions, and they wake up in the next life, and they spend the next 10 years in their life fighting battles that, that, that common sense would have prevented them. You come and say the Holy Spirit. I know when people tell you the Holy Spirit says you cannot question them. You take, you know, we always take decision based on our strength of our knowledge. We we'll always take decision based on the strength of our information and knowledge. This, your, the state of your mind, the state of your knowledge, the state of your mental capacity or spiritual capacity or spiritual maturity influences the quality of decision you take. So, some of the decision you take based on the strength of your knowledge now, your mindset now, that you think as if God is the one saying it. You wake up the next day and discover that this thing is not God. Therefore, people now say, you don't know that it's your mind. It's actually your, it was the reflection of your knowledge. So anything that comes to your mind through that very, through that very, uh, uh, that into your mind, you interpret it as, oh, wait, God is the one saying. So never do what, we, 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 we must learn to understand that law is not made in itself to the meters. We must learn as entrepreneurs 
the laws, we have to have a good understanding about the law. Amen. First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 13 to 17. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Whether it be to be to kings as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are what sent by him for the punishment of evil doers or for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men with well doing, with well doing, with when we behave ourselves in the market, when we behave according to ethics, when we are very ethical, when we are conscious of the law, when the enemy can come but cannot see any fault in the business we do, in the product we are rendering, in the services we are giving, when there is no fault. Amen. The Bible says the word, by well doing, ye may what put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Amen. By 16. As free and not using your liberty for clock of maliciousness. But as a servant of God, honor all men, love brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. We honor the king by obeying the rules and regulation. Amen. Romans chapter 13. Romans 13. I will start reading from verse 1 to verse 3. Romans 13 from verse 1 to 3. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The power that be are ordained of God. God is the one that ordains the power that be. The structure set in the market system, in the market square, in the, on the industry where you are. God is the one that put it for order, for orderliness. The people that may be there, spreading, may be very secular, they may not be spiritual, but that order, what sustained that system for that long? Is because there are certain rules and regulations that governs how things should be done and how things shouldn't be done. Amen. The Bible says the powers that be are ordained by God. Ordained of God. Whosoever, therefore, resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God, and they that what resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil works. Hallelujah. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do, th do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Meaning that when we do that which is good, when you know, in our workplace, in our business place, in our the system that God has said, we are doing that which is good. We are keeping to our promises. We are keeping to our integrity. When we say something, we do it. When we promise something, we do it. When our clients come, they meet up. I mean, I mean, impeccable, uh, impeccable. I mean, quality. You know, we don't compromise. The details, we pay attention to every details. We are, we maintain excellence. And when they do that, the Bible says what? The Bible says, "And thou shalt have praise of the same." When we keep to standard, we adhere to laws, rules, and regulation. When we maintain our our delivery, our the quality of our, our delivery, our work, our production and services. The Bible says, and what? And thou shalt have praise of the same. Now, all through the scripture, if you realize in the, in the Old Testament, the Bible spoke about three different kinds of law. Three different kinds of law. The Bible spoke about the moral laws. Amen. It spoke about the ceremonial laws. And the Bible spoke about what? The judicial law. Judicial law, which is a civil law. The moral law speaks about how the way you should live, how the things that do and done, and how to live. Amen. Are you catching me on how to be able to live? You know, how to be able to go about your daily activities in the Old Testament. Amen. The ceremonial law speaks about uh, the law. The law actually focused on an errand to uh, uh, the pattern of worship. How worship is being done. How services are being done. How leadership skills are being administered. And, anything. and the Bible spoke about the civil law. So both the moral law, amen, and the ceremonial law, and the civil law, in the Old Testament, they were the strategy God used to be able to create, to maintain the system. To maintain a structure. So I pray that God is going to help you. You know, we as entrepreneurs, we have to understand the legal part of the business we do. If you are into agriculture, oil and gas, you are into, you are into aviation, you are a you are into uh, 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 
fashion, you're into entertainment, you're into football, sports, you're into... Well, don't be conscious, don't be ignorant of the law. Understand the legal aspect of your industry, the legal aspect of your business, the legal aspect of your city. What are the rules and that govern the city, that govern the nation where you are, that govern... You don't do things the way you want, you do according to the rules and regulations. We don't run according, we run, we will not be recounted except we run according to what? According to the rules. I pray the Lord will supply us with wisdom to be able to understand how to be able to adhere to rules and regulation in the name of Jesus. I pray that God will empower us with wisdom where we understand the exact thing that is expected of us and do it the way it should in the marketplace. So that our words become so very, become like the words of God. When you promise something as a company, as a, as a CEO, as an MD, as an entrepreneur, as a leader, when you say something, only always say what you mean and mean what you say. Always say what you mean and mean what you say. What we don't mean, don't say it. If you mean no, you cannot be able to deliver within five days, don't say you're going to give within five days. If you know you cannot meet up with the quality, amen. You don't do anything, deliver any kind of service that you expect it to take it in the name of the Lord. It doesn't, it doesn't do. They can take you to There are things you can tolerate in Africa. When you begin to do business globally, you can't do it. There are mediocrity and nonsense we do in the name of, well, the, name of the Lord. Oh, we try to in, bring faith in place of, replace competence with faith and religion. We do that in Africa. When you begin to do business globally, you don't do that. And there's a level of mastery that you must adhere to if you must do business globally. There are there are standards you will never go below when you begin to do business globally. And I pray the Lord supply you with wisdom in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for my friends and family. The wisdom that we need for we to be able to walk with the consciousness of the law, of the secular justice system, and the kingdom justice system, we receive it in Jesus' name. Wisdom, Lord God Almighty, not to move to our left, not to our right, to walk according to precept, precept upon precept, to walk according to your dictation, to walk according to your instruction in the name of Jesus. That the system where we go, where we walk, O oh Lord, the wisdom, O oh Lord, for we to be able to adhere to the laws that is being given in that system, that will empower us to reveal your love to that system, we receive it in the name of Jesus. Every manipulation of darkness, every contention of darkness that will make us not to identify the law that the enemy has scripted or crafted to fight us, Signing deals that we have not understood, we have not read, we come against that spirit of error in the name of Jesus. We receive grace, we receive strength, we receive wisdom. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you. See you the same time on Monday. Your life will never remain the same. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.